You know, one of the things that a lot of web developers struggle with is validating their data to make sure whether or not the user has keyed in or keyed in the right amount of data or right kind of data. If that is something you are struggling with right now, make sure you watch this particular video in which I will share with you my easy validator script that you can utilize that will help you speed up your web development project. All right, so this is your typical entry form where a user can come in and enter a various different amount or different kind of uh, entries. So typically when you're doing that, you gotta write a whole bunch of JavaScript to make sure this field is filled in, this field is filled in, and this is a numeric value, this is a proper email, and this is URL, so on and so forth. Right, and that could be pretty pain in the butt if you have a long application that requires a long, a lengthy uh, entry form, or if you have multiple different entry forms that you want users to fill in, right? So this is just a pretty sign up form that I wanna give you an example. So what I'll do is I'll go through the process of how it works and then I'll show you the code. And then after that, lastly, I'll give you the URL in which you can download it and implement it into your web development project. So let's say we load this up. So let me just refresh it one more time. Here we go. So it's loaded. Now if I click on this, validate data at the very, very bottom, and then it's going to go, boom, you're supposed to put this in there. So let's just put, put we put like whatever, right? for the time being. So I'll just put here, then it goes to the whole process of validating all of these things. So if I type in Jabra Jabra Jabra, and then he'll say, hey, this is not the right format of the email, right? So I'll just type in, let's say gmail.com. And then I come in here and this is not required because it doesn't have the asterisk. So this in here, if I just try to skip it, it's not gonna let me do it. So I could just say, boom, 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 that's done. And then in here, I have to check in one of these uh, checkbox. So I'll check in here. And last but not least, we have to select one of these before we can move forward. So if I select this, and then it's like, voila, you have entered it. And then it gives me a JSON object that I can literally just send this to my server, my PHP server, or your ASP server, or whatever server you wanna send it to, Node.js, so on and so forth. You can send it and life is good. And that all you gotta do. Now, you're gonna be extremely surprised that when I show you how much code, the JavaScript code you have to write in order for you to get this. So get ready for this, here we go. So this is the file, and uh, this is the uh, this is actually the JavaScript library that you can include, and I'll give you the link. And then this is the line of code that you have to write to go through all of those validations. You'd be like, holy crap, imagine this, if you have a, a ton of forms that you want to validate. Make sure the user has entered a certain part of the uh, field and it's working, right? So if you could just imagine yourself writing this one line of code and it gives you in a JSON format that you can utilize and then send it to your server, how much time is this going to save you? Just think about it for one second. How much time is this going to show you? So this is the only line of JavaScript code you will have to write. So what that means is this is the validator. And then obviously this is jQuery based uh, validator. And those of you who have followed me before, you know I absolutely love jQuery because it's been around for God knows forever, at least more than 10 years. And this has a really good community out there and is supported by all the browsers. So we're good there, right? So this is the validator, the function it gets, and that this is the form or the container that it's gonna look for. And whatever's in that container, then it's gonna go do it. So let's show you what uh, what you would need to do when you are creating your HTML form. So let's go here. So this is the container, this is the login form. So let's say 
and one of the ideas which is user id so in here only thing i have to do is if i want to use this library that the library looks for is this particular uh actually these three things right here right here so what that means is if you put in require in here then it's going to make sure whatever entry type that you pick is going to uh a user make sure it does that and then the object name what that means is this is going to be your json object so what the hell does that mean so this means that this username right over here is going to be uh this right here so whatever user object name that you want to give you json object name this is what you're going to put here and then custom message is by ev which is for easy validator dash message and whatever custom message that you want to show you can type in here and then same thing goes in here for your uh, required object name your easy validated object name and then if you want to show a custom message you could show it if not you can leave it blank then the only thing that's going to do is let me show you so let's go right here let me just say for now one two three and i'll save it come back here refresh it and you will see the custom message see where it says custom message one two three and i'll type in blah 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 and i click okay and now if you don't have a custom message it's just going to say required feel that's all it's going to say and which is great so the so only thing you have to do is give it object name and required and that's that however if you don't put the required field in here it's just gonna skip it so for example which is the user number which is number right here if i go in here and type in blah 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 right here and then skip it it's going to completely skip this particular field unless you type in the word require and then we will move on. we move on so let's say you we have this object name url placeholder is this and then we go on to the next one which is your comment the object name is this and it's required and then we go on to the checkbox that's right we can use a validator to make sure the checkbox are required field the so same thing you just type in required the object name so on and so forth right and the interesting thing about this is let's say for some reason you have uh, made this input as a text box but you actually want this to be your uh actually let's go click on this so this is a regular url but you actually want it to be a number field so what you can do is this particular uh uh, library can let you identify what kind of field it is so which you can put it right here so it should be uh, ev dash type so in this case this is a drop down box so i typed in select and then followed by the message and the object name so let's take a look at the uh, library itself so we'll go here open this up and i'll just open it right in here you'll see it and this is the library if you want to customize that you absolutely have one right and one right only and that is use it for whatever the hell you want to use it for if you truly enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe give it a thumbs and comment below or if you feel like i missed something comment below to let me know as well as to let the community know so when they're in the process of doing the validation of the data entry they can follow your advice and that way you can help the community out as well